one of your predecessors, Gerhard Schroeder, was just tapped to join the board of the Russian energy giant Gazprom. He also sits on the board uh, of Nord Stream 2 and also the Russian oil producer Rosneft. Um, do you support him sitting on these boards? What, what message does that send? To he, is, he is not speaking for the government. He is not working for the government. He is not the government. I am the chancellor now. Right. And uh, the political strategies of Germany are the one you hear from me. But it is something that I've heard the Ukrainian cite as an example of where is Germany's allegiance? Look where Schroeder is. He's, he's cashing in with all these Russian uh, energy giants. Yeah, but uh, this is a talk you might have with him here at CNN, <laughs> uh, but uh, you should not have with me. I am doing the politics for Germany. I'm doing my job, and my job is to work very hard that the Ukraine has a good uh, future. And this is also what we do in the questions of uh, the economic future of Ukraine. As you know, Germany will go out of the use of gas and oil and coal in within 25 years. So we will not depend on the import of, uh, of fossil fuels uh, to Germany anymore. And this will happen very, very soon. This is why we enlarge our capacities in producing electricity, for instance, with offshore wind, with onshore wind, with solar. We are making our grid more strong. Mm -hmm. And we also work together with partners. And there is the UK in one of the key partners for our strategy for the future to produce hydrogen with their natural resources, because the industry to come in Germany and possibly worldwide will be an industry that is using gas, but not natural gas or coal or right, oil, a cleaner. but hydrogen produced, for instance, in the big landscape of the Ukraine. And our activity and our money is now offered to develop such an industry in the Ukraine for giving them a future post-gas. So I want to ask you about a few other issues. Uh, neither you nor your foreign minister plan to attend the Olympic Games in Beijing, but you, you have, you're not calling it an official diplomatic boycott. Uh, the United States, the UK, and others are, are doing an official diplomatic boycott because uh, of the Chinese government genocide uh, against the Uyghurs, uh, a Muslim ethnic minority. Why are you not doing an official diplomatic boycott if you're not going anyway? It, it does seem like Germany might have a special obligation to stand against genocide in other countries, given your country's history? First, Germany has the strongest legislation on, uh, on production overseas. We did this in the last uh, two years, and uh, it, which it's much more strict as in most other countries I know. And this will have an impact on the industries of our country if they buy things over, overseas. Uh, abroad, they will have to follow these rules and, for instance, looking at the of labor laws, looking at uh, human rights, as you mentioned, is a key strategy. And this will change the world because, as you know, we are a very strong industrial place. Right. We are a big importer and exporter, but what not all people understand, we are really importing a lot of things for the industrial goods we are producing. And if in this strategy we are doing this new regulation which we have now in Germany, this will change the world. But why not do a second, diplomatic boycott? And, and the second is that we agreed that we will do it together with our partners in the European Union, that we will find a common strategy on what we will explain in this case politically. But it was all the time clear that no one was planning to do a trip over there. Right. But China, the Chinese government is committing genocide against the Uyghurs and Germany has a history of genocide, I would think that your country of all countries would want to stand against what the Chinese government is doing. As I already said, we are working very hard and in all the activities we are doing, this is playing a big role. For instance, the rules of the International Labour Organization for us has to be implemented also in the trade agreements which are responsible, uh, which are planned between the European Union and, uh, and China one of the questions, but there are a lot of more. So you see that there is a very constant and very effective strategy we are following. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that this will help. Let's talk about Iran, because Germany is, is among the Western nations trying to revive that landmark and controversial Iran nuclear deal. If diplomacy fails um, and an agreement cannot be reached, what next steps do you, need, do you think need to be taken with Iran to convince that country to not uh, have a nuclear weapons program? We are very clear, together with our friends, we are 
working together and acting together. And this is now the time for Iran to make a decision. There is no time for prolonging the debates and things like that, which happened in the past. Because we look at the situation in Iran and we see that they are making progress with their capacity building of having a nuclear bomb and being able to use them on uh, missiles. And because of that, it's clear that we will not wait, that it will have a cost, it, it will have consequences if Iran is not using the opportunity which is coming up now. There is really leadership from the United States and the president, from all the partners we are working together to convince Iran now to use the chance which is now. And now that is the message I also would like to send from our talk here. Take the chance. It's not nothing for prolonging. We don't want to continue and continue, continue talks. It's now to take the chance. Last question, sir, and I really do appreciate your taking my questions. We've talked about Iran getting a nuclear weapon, the possibility. We've talked about war breaking out in Ukraine. Uh, we've talked about what's going on in China. There's so many threats in this world. What keeps you up at night? What do you worry about? I think we have to be absolutely clear that peace is the most important question we have to work for. This will be only successful if we are working for our own strength. It's uh, necessary for, for, for being successful. Peace everywhere we, or peace in Ukraine? What do, you, what do you mean? I'm speaking about peace everywhere. This is what you asked me about. Yeah. And so I think this will be an important aspect of our political strategy. This means military strength, and we are working very hard for that, and economic strength, which is the basis for military strength. And it is partnership in NATO and the European Union for us. And we will very much do this. And there is a new aspect in the politics which should never be underestimated. We understand ourselves as democracies, countries that follow the rule of law. And this is what is what makes us being the same team with the United States and with our partners in the European Union. And this is different to many other countries and regimes and states in the world. But I'm absolutely sure that the way of life we have with democracy, the rule of law, with individual freedom and with market economy is a way of life that people would appreciate all over the, the planet. And so we should be confident that if we are following a clear strategy of uh, international cooperation, but implemented in cooperation between partners and allies, as the NATO, for instance, is, we will be successful in the end. But do you, just to, just to try to uh, uh, bring this point home, President Biden talks a lot about how the, the struggle right now in the world is between democracies, like the United States and Germany, versus autocracies, places where there are no freedoms, where uh, there is no democracy, like Russia, like China. Do you worry that we are going to lose that fight? No. It is a strong fight, but uh, the ideas that created the United States and the ideas that were important for our democratic development, they are ideas of mankind. They are not just Western ideas or North America and Europe and some other places. It's something which is deeply in us as, as men. And because of that, I'm absolutely sh sure that this, we will succeed in this game because it's coming from the people even in those countries. And the very strange situation we are in is that this is not anymore a struggle between communism, socialism on the one side and capitalism on the other. There are all over capitalist states North Korea may be the, the one other country, but uh, all the others are capitalists, but they are autocrats. They are following ideologies and they are not giving the freedom to their people, which they are lacking for. And so we should develop our role in the world of international cooperation in uh, multilateralism, that we build an environment where during this situation, the people of those countries will take their chances.